Now once again we're looking at a photograph of my original painting. I want to draw your attention to the way these leaves disappear into the background, how they appear to just fold back or just be folding into the light. This one here is folding back and you can see the, um, the veins on the leaves just disappearing and receding. Others have got dappled shadow on them. Um, there's one just at the top here which looks as if it's just got a little glimmer of light on it. And I'm not sure if you can see but further in the background there's just the suggestion of leaves. Now I want to show you how I do that. Um, I'm going to show you how I bring my washes over onto the leaves and how you have lost and found edges. Now I'm going to go back to a, an earlier study. You can see how I have brought a dark background up to the edge of the leaves. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is wet this area and I'm going to put another few washes over the top and I'm going to allow those washes to come up and over at the top of that leaf and that will give the impression that that leaf is just receding into the background. So first of all we start with a clear water wash. Now obviously this isn't just for leaves, you can use this method for anything. Um, when you're doing roses and you want the rose petals to turn and disappear into the background, um, if you're doing a portrait and you want the face, one side of the face to just turn and um, be affected by the shadows from the background and, and just be emerging from the background, well this is exactly what you do. So I have put on my first clear water wash, I'm going to allow that to soak in, now we're coming in with the second clear water wash. I want this to gradually come over onto the leaf. I'm wetting the area surrounding that as well. Now, shadow colours once again, um, sap green, phthalo blue, just whatever you've used in your background, but these are the ones that I predominantly use. Phthalo blue, alizarin crimson. I need to darken that background a little because we just can't have the leaf dark, the shadow of the leaf, it has to come from somewhere that has a similar degree of depth of colour. And I'm just dabbing it over that leaf. And allowing the water on the leaf to disperse it gently. This will also have the wonderful effect of pushing this upper leaf a lot further forward. Now there's, I can see that, or I can feel, that there's really not quite enough water on that, that leaf. It's not moving quite as well as I would like it, so I'm going to come in with a clear water wash again. And I'm going to ease that into that shadow colour. So we can continue to drop in colour and build up our washes just as we have done so many times before. Another thing is once your leaf and your background and your shadows are dry, the way to look, make that background look very transparent and luminous is to re-establish something like this, uh, this spine, this yellow spine that comes down here. You can try and lift out some of the colour once the um, colour has dried, once your washes have dried, you can try and lift a little bit out or you can come back in with, here we have it, a watercolour pencil. Actually this one's a little bit too warm. Maybe use a, in this case I would use more of a lemon yellow. I'd sharpen it too, this one's not very sharp. Um, so I'm not teaching you my bad habits I hope. What I would do once everything is totally dry, if I found that I couldn't lift the colour, I would just run down that spine and make it um, so that some areas are more yellow than others, just as it would be in nature. And that way you'll find that that shadow will look wonderful and luminous and transparent. Actually, before we sign off on this one, 
I'd like to show you exactly what I mean. Now take a look at this. I've deliberately gone over that spine and you'll see that we have a very dead look there. We, it doesn't look like a shadow so well. Um, we have a very lost edge on this side but it looks almost like a black hole. So what I want to do is come in with a brush with just clear water and we'll see if we can lift a little bit of that colour out of the area where the spine is and you'll see how translucent that area is going to look. All of a sudden it makes it read shadow. And maybe we can take a little bit out of another area here just to suggest that that leaf is still there. That is actually barely visible. So, and I now realize I should have sharpened this pencil after saying it. But yeah, we'll just have a go now and just use this intermittent line suggest that there's a vein going through there and you see how much more translucent that looks and how much more um, that reads as if this is a leaf and this is shadow. So use that, use that for petals, use it for portraits, for hands, whatever, anything that's in shadow, remember you can come back in with your watercolour pencils, these are watercolour pencils as opposed to ordinary um, coloured pencils, um, and recapture little areas like that.